actual pathway is what's around by. And the memory gets blurry. Um, and we get old. You know, as we get old, I was 30 years old when I when I was on the streets. And I never imagined I was going to be there. But, you know, what we saw on the TV, you know, when the government started to look at people, it's something that inspired me to be there. You know, I, I, I'm, I wasn't an activist until then. And I could say my life has been, you know, after and before what happened in, in 2000. And, you know, just listening to you, so many things come to my memory. That the fact that we went door to door to mm. talk to the people, you know, to explain what was going on, what, what the legislation was going to mean. And, you know, there wasn't Facebook or, you know, there wasn't <laughs> any uh, media things that now are. And we did it all, you know, face to face small meetings, just talking in the corner with people. I think we need that. And, you know, this is an opportunity. What's happening in Detroit, as sad and hard it is for the people, is an opportunity to reclaim something else. And, you know, just passing to the second question that, that you, you, you had, it's like, um, we never give up. You know, we never thought that the company, this corporation, because it was a huge corporation, it was bigger than, than, than Bolivia in terms of, um, you know, uh, economics. We never thought we were going to win. Um, and um, <coughs> then actually the company came back to our hands. We were like, shit, you know, what are we going to do in the future? <laughs> How are we going to resolve the problem? And uh, we never thought that, that that victory could be possible. You know, we always are repeating on a, and uh, this is longer than that on the streets for, you know, for all my life has, I have listened to this, that people united will never be defeated. And that is, you know, we made that true. You know, we made it that possible. And, you know, that's the message that I want to pass to you. The legislation was passed here, privatization was was already here, but we could revert to that and, you know, never give up and, um, and um, you know, in, imagine what it's, what, what it's possible. And again, you know, these struggles are not just about water, it's about mainly democracy, you know, what does mean that? And who has the right to decide about the things that matter to us or that, you know, affect to us? I think that's very important to take it into account because, um, you're going to realize, uh, um, you know, when you dig up more, that it, it, it's all so much interconnected with other issues and, uh, and other things. And, you know, it's, it's, to me, has been a struggle for, for life, you know. I've been, I've been in this since then. Uh, before that, I was doing, a, you know, working at a desk and being a researcher, very far from reality, you know, trying to explore and say what I was seeing. But now I'm so involved with that. And also, you know, another thing to, 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 to reflect on is, is, is alternatives. You know, if we're saying no to, the, to, to, to this, this type of model, if we're saying no to what I cut, to what we're saying yes. And, and imagine alternatives is very, very important. And it's the other second step that we have to do once we have won. So it's not just to throw stones and to resist, but it's also to create and imagine something new. And I think that's, that's even a biggest challenge because uh, our current systems, it's very, it could be very hard. And, you know, more now that within Latin America, we have this pro progressive government and they're not so progressive in their policies. They're very progressive in their rhetoric and when they speak out, um, outside, but here, you know, the places that we're living are still pretty awful. And again, you know, it's very, very important that we can um, create uh, an alternative. I, I realize that um, seeing all these, you know, water companies, these all these private <laughs> companies are leaving Latin America, and suddenly, you know, citizens in Santa Fe, Argentina, in Bolivia, in La Paz, in Cochabamba, you know, we realized that, you know, we have to have a, an answer to you. And I think that's, that's very important to think. Okay. Um, uh, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you very much. Um, I was going to say, we have a second question, which is, what can Detroit and Cochabamba learn from each other? But maybe rather than ask uh, Tawana and Marcella that, Maybe we ask the group, is there any question 
that you would like to ask Marcella because the, 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 the conversation is so rich there's so much uh, important information as well as perspective that I thought maybe if, if someone here would like to ask the question please mm -hmm. oh I do so what have you all I'm Kim Kim Shirobi Marcella nice to meet you and yes thank you for your work what have you learned about self-governing what have you all learned about governing yourself that maybe you were surprised about or just that you want to share with us did, did you hear the question? Yes. Oh, good. Um, you know, um, we, the media is in, in some other countries in Latin America are countries that have a lot of um, traditional autonomy. Um, you know, the state has been so absent in our countries that people you know, cannot be without drinking water. So we have to create our own water you know, systems. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, I mean when I say like only 60% of the population in Bolivia gets the water, not through a public system, public meaning from the state, but mainly from uh, autonomous water systems run by the communities, run by, you know, indigenous population uh, or people who have migrated to the cities and they, you know, brought their um, uh, organizative organi organi tradition from their communities. So we, I think we, we, we know how to live um, without the state. And actually, we, I think we are, in some cases, we are much better without the state because the state just comes to, you know, to tell us what to do. They, they, they take over our initiatives, you know, they regulate, they, and they are the ones that then privatize, you know, they sell our things. So I, I, I think we came from, um, you know, and I'm talking about everybody in this, in this world, in, in the societies, we come from a tradition that was very different uh, than from the state. Um, we are trying to recover in, 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 in Bolivia the notion of the commons. Um, you know, not as something that is um, uh, a resource, you know, like water. Water is part of the commons, but it's more like a practice. It's not really, really a thing, but it's more like a practice. It's like what we do in relationship to something. I think, you know, I would say we have to go beyond the state. Uh, we have to go uh, further than they tell us that we can go. We have to start to, um, to you know, in, in doing the water war in Cochabamba, we did this, this referendum that was completely illegal. Uh, it wasn't contemplated in any law, in any legislation, but we did it anyways, and that gave us credibility. And uh, so we, we have to start to think, to do things outside of that. I know we, we all face risks. You know, we were threatened here. The government declared a state of siege, and, uh, you know, army was on the streets, but we could do that. I, I don't see why Detroit won't be able to do exactly the same. And, uh, you know, that self-management, that self-governance, when we all decide and we all carry on with the things that we, we want to do. Thank you. Thank you, Marcella. I, I want to just stand up and clap right now. I'm just <laughs> saying thank you. You just energized me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you no. guys are inspiring us because, uh, you know, it's... When we see what's going on in Detroit, and sometimes when we see what's going on in Palestine too, because they are also facing this 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 problem, is we realize that we are so connected, and that it is not over, and that we have to, you know, the fact that we are talking to each other, it's amazing, because um, how can you know people in the north and the south connect and inspire each other? You know, to me, it's like. It is not over. Um, you know, they, they told us that the North has everything, but it's not like that. You know, the same people are facing exactly the same that we are facing here. And uh, you know, how can we help each other? I think that's you know something that we should keep beyond um, beyond this conversation right now. Um, but it's like, how can we? You know, there is a very strong um, border movement. Um, outside that has been created because all these struggles, we, we learn to, you know, connect to each other. So it's like, how can we connect what's happening to an international level with what's going on in Detroit? And you guys have to have to know that you are not alone. That people are fighting the same struggles here too, and um, you know, it's like we just have to make sure 
you don't feel lonely on, on what's happening there. Thank you, and we return the love. Thank you. That's okay. That's good. So, um, we're getting near the, uh, uh, I think, getting near the time to kind of uh, move on. Do uh, any more questions? Does somebody, anyone else want to ask a question? So we have the second question, uh, which I think we've touched on uh, a bit, and maybe we can go a little bit deeper into this. But what can Detroit and Cochabamba learn from each other? Do you want to start, Tawana? And then we'll give it to Marcella. I mean, I, I think Marcella uh, touched on it so heavily. Um, I just really feel like just just having this discussion, I know for me personally, it re-energized me. Um, it's, it's easy to feel alone in this, even when you're surrounded by, you know, people every day. Um, fighting in this, it, it's easy to feel alone and um, to talk to someone who has been at the forefront of this struggle <laughs> for over 14 years and hear it from your voice means a great deal. Um, it, it, you know, just the, the thought of visioning something outside of this system makes me want to stay up every night and just make it happen. I mean, um, the fact that we can relate our struggles to one another and at the end of the day we're struggling for humanity for people to have access to, a, to something that should be considered a human right and a commons not just water but you know everything the land the earth and 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 with respect for the earth um, I mean there's just it, it's so much that Detroit and Cochabamba can learn from one another in Palestine and Chile and Central Appalachia and I mean you could go on um, it's, it's just I think that these conversations are so significant and I'm with you Marcella I, I pray that we will continue to engage one another even if it's just to, to check in and say hey what did you do today that helped you through this next thing because this is what we're going through you know um, it just really expands you know your, my faith in humanity and so I really think that uh, we can learn from one another and I'm glad that uh, that you told me that you all went to door to door because I, I, I'll just tell you briefly we were we were standing outside and it was raining, it was cold, and we had been canvassing for hours and we were just packing up to leave and two young men from the neighborhood came out on the porch and they just started chanting, Whose water? And everybody turned around and went, Our water <laughs> And it was just you know, that was so liberating because it felt like all the weight of the world had been on our shoulders. And then all of a sudden we realized that what we were doing meant something to somebody and it just, it re-energized us. So um, I think we're moving in the right direction and talking to you solidified that for me. Um, I, I, you know, we have here the Kutubaba about Detroit. Um, you know, I just want to reassure you guys are doing a great job because we are listening about you here down south. <laughs> and it's not, you know, it's, just, it's not the main media that's talking about that, but it's it's the people, you know. Mm. And um, and that's that's I think very very important. And I don't I don't know. You know, I wish I was there to give you a hug. <laughs> I feel it. Like. Uh, because I believe in the power of that. You know, I believe that um, you know, we haven't seen each other. Uh, this is the first time we're talking to each other, but it feels so, you know, so connected to what's happening there. And, um, you know, it, again, you know, everything is possible. Uh, we just want to pass you that message. You know, there's no proper destiny, proper faith. You know, we, we can do something. We can change that. And it's, again, to unity with people. And uh, it's very important to face to face contact. Uh, it's very important to, you know, sit down together. I think we have lost that with the with the with the media, you know, we have lost that um, the power of, you know, seeing each other through the eyes and, and, and talking to each other. I, I feel that's that's very important and you guys are doing it that way. 
So I hope we can, you know, keep in touch. And I don't know how many people are there, and I don't know the background of them, but I hope, you know, the story of, you know, these stories um, can help to move into action. Because if, if we just sit down in our seats, you know, we're not going to do too much. I think it's very important to, that, that this conversation lead us to something else, you know, and it's, that's to organize, talk with the neighborhood, talk with the, you know, that's to make the revolution. When, when the socialism, you know, all the people talk about the revolution, I think it's not a point where we are arriving, but it's what we are doing, you know, uh, every day. Um, and, you know, just want to tell you, you guys are doing a great job, and I know, I know we're going to hear good news from you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Marcella. So I think we're at the uh, we're, okay. Well, th thank you so much. I know we are going to uh, talk again. I think Diana set up this call, um, and thank you once again. Um, you know, um, yeah, long live the people of Cochabamba and uh, the struggle for water is a, a, a human right. Water is life. We say here. Um, thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.